Okay, so in the previous session, I showed you how I shut down Linux from scratch midway, and now I'm going to show you um, how to bring it back together again, and so we can carry on with the compile. So I've just started the PC. Hopefully, eventually, yep, there's the screen that's appearing. Now there's no operating system on there that's bootable because it's all been wiped with the Linux version. So um, the USB stick, which is still in there, the live USB has booted, as you can see. So I'll just go back in and start it up. So this is no different to what we did originally, apart from the fact we didn't have to force the boot by selecting the boot device, because as I say, there's nothing else to boot within the machine. So it's probably needs syncing up, that's it. So let's get rid of that and set up the keyboard again. Remove the US one, add a UK one. Uh, extended Windows. Apply that, close that down, get the browser up and a terminal. So it's roughly about there. I'll become rooting this so we can do lots of admin type operations and I'll move this browser to occupy the rest of the screen as before. I'll get these and the first thing I'll do is to go to the Linux from scratch org website and we want Linux from scratch read online and we want to read this stable version which is that one there and if you remember before I had ACL to reinstall so I'm just going to get that tab up first and then the next package we've got to do is open SSL so that's where we're going to continue let's make these a little bit bigger But we can't just go straight in and carry on. We need to do things such as mount the um, root partition that we're building on, and we need to mount the virtual file systems, and then we need to troot into the environment before we can carry on as we were before. So I'll go back to the contents, uh, go to the chapter seven, and we want to go to preparing virtual kernel file systems first. And here I'll do an F disk minus L. You can see our hard disk is SDA. That was the partition we were building on, SDA2. So first of all, first thing I'm going to do actually is export LFS. So of course if I now do echo dollar LFS, it shows what we've just set it to. Next thing I need to do is make the directory again because this is a a virtual environment it doesn't really exist apart from in memory it's not been retained anywhere so make that directory and now I need to mount the root partition which is that device at LFS sorry not that partition is it that's the swap it's that partition so STA3 and I also do want to turn on the swap partition, which is SDA2. So if I now list LFS, 
you can see there's the stuff that's been done in the past day or two and if I type in swap on there's the partition on STA2 that I've just activated and, and enabled if we need it so now I'm in a position where I can mount the virtual file systems so mount that one and then again I'll run these all in together they should all go in successfully there's no reason why they shouldn't and you can see there's the outputs from three of them um, I'll run this again although no I don't need it um, sorry yes it does yeah this one's got an else clause so it, regardless of what um, host you're using it's going to do one thing or the other so you do need to type this in I'll copy and paste this in so that's done now I can go into entering the truth environment copy and paste the truth command again there's, there's no history because again this is just a, a virtual environment sitting in memory it gets lost as soon as the power is lost put that command back in add in the make flags And that's it, we're back in our Linux from scratch system. Um, one thing I'm going to do, I haven't done yet, is to ensure the screensaver and the blanker doesn't come on. So I'll do that now. And I think that's all that needs to be done. I'm sure if I remember something I've forgotten that I'll do it at that time. So that's that we're done. We're back to where we were just before we finished up previously. So we can now carry on with open SSL. So as usual, we'll start with the configuration. and we start the build. While that's building, I'm going to open a new tab to start the SSH server so that I can get the kernel config on here. I've got a kernel config specific tailored to this machine. So I'm going to start the SSH server. And I'll just check to see what the IP address is. So it's 192.168.073. So I can copy that on another terminal onto this machine. And I need to set the password of the root. So this is the Gen 2 root. Because I don't know what it is. It's unset. And I'll set the password of the Jordan user as well. Which is Gen 2. We're currently logged in as the Gen 2 user just so they're in a known state and I'll just wait now for OpenSSL to finish compiling
Okay, it's finished compiling. I'm going to run some tests now. It does say that one test will fail or is known to fail if the kernel does not have a particular setting enabled or doesn't have any options providing an AES with CPC implementation. Um, it gives examples there. Um, and also depending but it looks on what the CP, CPU is capable of but if it says if it fails it can be safely ignored so um, I can have a look at that actually because I've just copied over the config that I'm going to use so let's take a look while that's testing Right, I have got that user crypto user API SK cipher enabled. Uh, no, sorry, no, it's disabled. A big pardon. It's got a hash in front of the line, so uh, there's a good chance that that will fail that test. Then,
so that's finished. Um, there were no failed tests, so that obviously means that the kernel that's running within Gen 2 has got these options set, but obviously if I use the kernel that I'm going to, or use an LFS with the kernel that I'm going to install, um, it would mean that if I used that LFS to build LFS again, that that test would obviously fail, um, but it wouldn't be a big issue anyway, according to the manual. So let's install the package. We put first put a sed command in, and then run the install. Okay, that's installed. So now we're going to put a version number against the documentation directory and copy some additional documentation into that directory. Um, it says here about updating OpenSSL to fix vulnerabilities, etc. Um, if OpenSSH is installed, which will be installing, um, if carried on with BLFS, it contains an over restrictive SSL version check. Um, but basically, it's saying you need to reinstall OpenSSH if you install OpenSSL. And obviously, programs that are running need to be stopped and restarted if they're using any of these. So that's quite obvious, really. Um, but it's good that they've made a note of that. As a reminder, if nothing else. So we'll tidy that up and move on to the next package, which is Kmod. So let's start with the configure. build the package and it says the test suites of this package requires raw kernel headers not sanitized kernel headers and that's beyond the scope of LFS so we just install it and it looks like we create some links And one final one here. And that's Kmod done. So libelf from ElfUtils. So this is obviously just one part of ElfUtils that's being built that's needed here. Uh, so we extract the ElfUtils package. And then the instructions will control just the bit that we need built.
Okay, it's done. Let's run some tests. That's all passed, no problems there. So we install just the libelf library with that command. And looks like we'll copy a package config file as well. And remove a static library. And that's done. And move on to libffi. Um, it's, there's a note here saying like GMP libffi builds with optimization specific to the process renew. So if you know you are building for a slightly different architecture, then it says to use that switch there. So we're just telling it here to use a native. And build that now. Check the results.
Okay, that's finished running. Um, can't see anything saying there was any errors. It just says number of expected passes. It doesn't even say that it has passed. Um, so it's a bit cryptic in its result, but uh, it certainly doesn't look bad. So accept that as being successful. So install the package and that's complete. And move on to Python. Again, just a reminder that Python begins with a capital P, not a lowercase p. So we'll start with the configure. Okay, so we'll start the compile with make.
Okay, that's all built. It says that uh, about running tests not recommended. Some tests are known to hang. Um, and the tests can be run at the end of the chapter. Now, when I've done that in the past, I've not seen any difference or um, you know, any, anything special or good in running the tests at the end of the chapter. We're still in the true environment. Um, apart from the fact there's a few more packages been built. And as it says there, when Python 3 is reinstalled in BLFS, um, so if you go ahead and do BLFS, the chances are you'll be reinstalling it. So I'm not going to run it now. Um, what I'd probably recommend to do is to run the tests when um, Linux from scratch has been booted. So what I'm going to do is leave the Python directory there and I'll make a note to run make test um, after we've booted just to check the results and see if that actually produces a better result. Um, in fact, I suppose I could run it now to see what differences there are. Um, and in fact, to prevent that from being tainted in any way, would I be able to copy that? Um, let's see if that works. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Okay, they're about the same size, so that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'll try running make test here and see what the result is. And well, depending on the result, I mean, if it looks all right, then perhaps it it's not a problem in this situation. Um, but otherwise, like I said, I think I'll. Well, I suppose I could have a go at running at the end of the chapter, but as I say previously, I've not noticed any difference. So I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong or misreading something, misinterpreting something. Um, but decide what to do depending on what the result of this is.
Well, uh, this looks like the part where it's um, actually locked up in an infinite loop because while these <clears throat> test sockets here were being printed, these uh, test socket messages, um, I was monitoring the processes on another terminal and there was work being done um, as soon as this appeared this message and and from now onwards um, there doesn't appear to be any process that's running consuming CPU at all so that's probably the point that it locks up um, or clearly while this these were being printed it was still waiting for something but other stuff was going on in the background as well so uh, that was related to the testing so i think i'm going to just press ctrl c there and i'll delete that copy i'll keep the original directory um to run the tests on oops i've just deleted the wrong one now uh okay so i have to work with the copy that i've got um I'll rerun that. Uh, hopefully, the test can start again um, and see if there is any difference in the results. So, I'll run make install on that. Okay, running pip as the root user can result. Right, okay. So just create this config file. And then we've got an important message here in LFS and BLFS. We normally build and install Python modules with the pip3 command. Please be sure the pip3 install commands in both books when there's a root user. And PIP3 installers and non root user may seem to work, but will cause the install module, module to be inaccessible by other users. Okay. If, in des if desired, install the preformatted documentation so we can do that. So, as I say, I think um, what I'll do now is just redo the all of Python at the end um, and see what the results are. So let's move on to flit core. Build the package with this command and install it. And that's that, that's very simple. Move on to wheel. And again, there's a pip3 command. install it and tidy that up and move on to ninja so this used to be an optional package for sysv um, but I believe it's being used by something else in the build now um, I can't remember which package it is now. I did read something. Um, so now it's a necessary package for System V. Previously it was just needed for System D. Um, we can use an optional procedure here to specify the number of cores to use via a um, environment variable. And we can make 
Ninja Jobs recognize that environment variable with this modification here. So let's start building with Ninja with this bootstrap command. Okay, let's run some tests. So it says pass this, that's all okay. We can install the package with these three commands. And that's Ninja complete. So next we move on to Mison. Build it with this command, this pip3 command. That's built and we install it. And that's complete. So now we move on to core utils okay so we've got a patch there yep yeah. so we prepare core utils for compilation run this auto reconf and we can run the configure with that command. Okay, let's build the package.
Okay, that's built. So now we're going to run some tests. And first of all, we run some tests that are meant to be run as user root with this command. So they've all passed. Now we're going to run some tests as a non root user. So we need to prepare for that. And now we can run those tests. It does say one test may fail in the LFS true environment. So we'll see if we get that or not. Okay, so those have all passed. I did note or did remember that I had set the scroll back completely, so I probably can't scroll back all the way no, to these tests because I did see there was some green that passed by, so um, I didn't see any red, which I would guess would indicate a fail, but I'd assume that as there's no errors at the end of this, it's all completed successfully. Um, and certainly this section has not reported any errors that that's a successful test. So let's delete the dummy group and install the package. And finally move some programs to comply with the FHS standard. And that's core utils done. So if you cast your mind back, we had to rebuild ACL so that we could retest it um, as it relied on core utils for the full coverage of tests. So I'm going to do that now. Let's extract ACL again. Start with the configure, build it, and check results. And yeah, this time we've got no failures at all. Um, yeah, we had four fails before, so and two expected fails, so uh, you can see that Core Utils has made a difference there. So because this one's tested better than the previous one, although they might be the same, I've installed or reinstalled ACL. So that's that complete. I'll shut that down and we can move on to the next package, which is check.
So let's rerun configure. Oh, sorry, a run configure. And start the build with make. And run some tests. Okay, so that's completed, all passed. Let's now install the package. And tidy that up. And move on to diffutils. So, Quite straightforward instructions for compiling this package. Build a package. And 
and check the results. And finally install it. That was all successful there. And that's done. Let's now move on to the next package, which is Gork. We've got one set command. Configure the build build the package And now we're going to test the results. So we need to change everything to be owned by tester. And then run this command to run the tests. And install the package. It says all tests pass this, that's okay. Create a sim link and install some documentation. And that's Gork finished. And now we move on to find utils. Configure the package. Now build it. And run some tests. We'll change the ownership again. Run this command to start the tests. And that's all complete. There's no errors at the end. We've got passes on that section. Uh, previous section, we've got everything passed, no errors. Now if we scroll back further, there was another little bit I think I just saw. Uh, perhaps not.
No, that's it, those two parts. So that's all okay. And let's install. And that's complete. So next on to Groff. So start by configuration of the package and we need to set this parameter here, paper size. Uh, for UK it's A4, I believe most of Europe as well. Oops. Um, letter is another option as it says there and it can be overridden later by echoing either of those two words into ETC paper size. So let's start the build. and run some tests. So we've got uh, no errors there, no failures, two expected fails, 10 skips, but the rest passed, so that's fine. Install the package and tidy up. So now we move on to grub. Okay, so we've got a patch there, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you have decided to go with UEFI, then you need to go to the BLFS page and follow the instructions there. Um, I hope to do another UEFI LFS install sometime, so um, I'll be doing that then. But yeah, at the moment, it's just a standard BIOS boot on this machine, there's no UFI at all. If you've got any of these flags set, um, unset them. Uh, I have myself in the past, before this warning appeared, had them set and wondered why a grub will compile fine but doesn't boot properly. Uh, it just hangs on the boot and it's because of these optimizations. Um, so yeah, unset them beforehand. Let's run patch and start the configuration. Okay, let's build it now.
That's done. It says about running tests, but not recommended because a lot of the packages required are not available. So I'm not going to even attempt to do that. So let's go straight to install. And move a bash completion file. And that's grub finished. So move on to gzip. Start with a configure and build it. Test it. and finally install it with all those passes and tidy up let's now move on to IP root and we've got a sed and a man page which looks like that's going to be removed now we compile the package, there's no configure by the looks of it. And there's no test suite either to run. and install the package and then install some documentation and that's complete next got kbd yeah kbd okay so that's got a patch there yep yeah. So let's put that patch in first and this is to fix i386 key maps, key maps which is probably um, I guess every single PC keyboard so a couple of set commands and we start the compile with the configuration then do the actual compile and then run some tests and they're all successful install the package there's a warning there about certain languages not having uh, compatible key maps and have to be downloaded separately so if you're one of those users, that's something to bear in mind. And copy some documentation. And now we go on to lib pipeline. A straightforward installation. Build the package, test the package, 
we'll just compiled all passes, no failures, and install it. And now move on to make. So start with configure. Build it. And test the results. First we change the files to the tester user run the tests So that's all passed, it says. No failures. So let's do the install. And that's complete. And move on to patch. So straightforward compilation again with a standard configure. Run make to build it. And test what we've just produced. Uh, no failures or errors. Uh, so we can install it. <coughs> Tidy that up and we move on to tar. So prepare for configuration. Okay, let's build a package. And run some tests. It does say that the time taken to build the test can be reduced by specifying multiple jobs by adding that to the make check command and it can reduce it by over 50% uh, sorry 70% so despite the fact that we're supplying or telling it we can use four times as many uh, cores to run the test we're not getting 400% but we're not even getting 100% we're only getting 70% but at least it is some improvement uh, it's better than nothing so let's just out of interest time that see how long that takes
So that's finished with uh, one failure. Uh, it does say binary store restore is known to fail because LFS lacks SE Linux. Um, let's help and maybe found below. Let's have a look at that. Three. Yep, there it is there. Binary store restore. So that's okay that that's failed because it's known about and there's a reason for it. So we can go straight to make install and copy some documentation. Or rather build some documentation. So that's tar complete. And we move now on to text info. So we'll start with the configure. Build it. And run some tests. Okay, there's no errors there. Everything I saw as it went past didn't have any errors, so I assume that if any of these did have an error, it would be reflected at the end. So that's all good. Let's install and install components belonging to a text installation. Um, says here that if you need to rebuild uh, the uh, what is it uh, oh yeah this is this uh, te plain text file that holds um, a list of uh, menu entries and get out of sync with the pages that are installed on the system so this command here will rebuild it if that ever needs to be done so let's tidy up text info and move on to Vim. There are alternative editors here as it says, but you need to go to the BLFS book for that if you wish to install something else. So let's start by putting this option in and running the configure command. So build a package with make.
So that's finished building. So I would prefer testing with this command to change files to be owned by a tester and run the tests, redirecting the output to a log file. As it says there, nothing, nothing will appear on the screen while this is running. Uh, there's a lot of binary data gets sent to the screen, which can cause issues with the terminal. So all we need to do is to look for the words all done at the end of the log file.
Okay, so that has finished running. So what we can do now is to do a grep for all the words all done in capitals on the log file, which is called vimtest.log. And you can see it's responded with all done. So we know that um, that did complete successfully. And of course, if you're in any doubt, you could do something like tail uh, vim test.log um, That's interesting, it's not actually at the bottom by the looks of it. think it was it does say that the words all done in the log file at completion uh, okay let's do a make install and then use the newly installed via to look at the test log uh, it's actually called vim let's go to the bottom of the file I don't know where the words all done come from. I thought they were at the bottom. Oh, there it is there. Okay, so it's just some other superficial commands it runs, but the actual testing has actually finished. I, I always assumed it was at the bottom. Uh, clearly not. So anyway, yes, the, that grep's definitely the better way to check for that string in that file. So we've installed it. Now let's run some commands to allow us to actually use Vi to start it off rather than Vim and change the manual pages as well, the main pages and link the documentation to a versioned directory as well. Uh, configuring Vim, There's some defaults we can put in here. And there's more options you can find out about by entering that command. And there's some information there about spell checking for any language other than English. So let's tidy that up. And move on to markup safe. Okay, this is capital M. Yes, it is. So it starts with a capital M. Probably because it's a Python tool or module. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, module, it says there. So build it with that and install it with that command. And that's complete. So that's that, now we move on to Ginger. Another one of the new modules that's being installed as part of Linux from scratch. And again, pip3 command to build it and another one to install it. And that's complete. So now we're going to build UDEV. Uh, it used to be EUDEV, but I think that's been deprecated or it's not being updated as much now. Um, so that's why. Um, the UDEV is being used from systemd. So it says the UDEV is part of the systemd254 package. So we type in systemd. 254 to extract it, change into that directory and remove two unneeded groups from the default UDEV rules. Remove one UDEV rule requiring full system D installation. I didn't copy properly. And 
prepare it for compilation. So we do a temporary build directory and change into it. Then we run Mizen to build it. Oh, sorry, prepare it. So this is like the equiv equivalent of the configuration. And then we copy all of this because this is one command to build just the components for UDEV. So that's complete. So now we remove another UDEV rule, which requires full system D installation. And finally, we install the package by copying all these install commands. So I just copy and paste each one and just check the output, make sure there's no problems. Check the outputs, what's expected. So it's a bit tedious doing one at a time, but it's a way that you can guarantee that the commands have actually completed by running them in one at a time and just inspecting the output. Install some custom rules and support files useful in an LFS environment. So extract that package and install them. Then install some man pages. So this is one command here. And a set command. Another set command. And finally, uh, an RM command to remove some obviously unwanted files. Configuration information about hardware devices maintained in these two files. You don't need the information to be compiled into binary database. So create the initial database. With that, it says this command needs to be run each time the hardware information is updated. So maybe something that wants to be put into a cron job which is part of BLFS to install a cron. Apart from that, that's complete. Oops. So I clicked on that and I hadn't. So let's tidy up. And we can move on to MANDB. So I've got this big configuration command.
let's build the package. Run some tests. Okay, we've got one failure. Uh, it does say here that one test is known to fail, and there it is, so that's fine. So let's now install the package, and that's complete. Uh, this table is about uh, non English man pages. Um, and it does actually say down here that if the pages um, or if your language is not listed in that table, then they're not supported basically. So we'll tidy that up and move on to proc PSMG. Configure the package. Build the package. Test the results. past and install it and done next go on to util linux first we've got a set to fix a problem test or to disable it rather Got quite a large configure command. And build a package. Okay, that's compiled. It says not to run the test as a root user. It could be harmful. Um, and the reason why, so the files are changed to the owner of tester and we run the tests as tester using that command.
Okay, those tests are finished. It says that all 261 tests have passed. So that's good. It does say again, kernel configuration can affect the tests, but clearly the Gen 2 system has got these options built into the kernel. So it's not been affected by that. So let's just install the package. And that's the end of that. And move on to E2FS progs. So we start by creating a temporary directory and running our configure. While that's running, it does mention at the top here that the build times depend on what sort of hard disk you've got. So if it's a, a old mechanical style hard disk, uh, it'll take 2.4 SBUs, but on an electronic disk, it'll take half, just over half an SBU. So it's obviously doing lots of writes or reads to the disk, uh, probably during the tests, I would imagine. So just building that and then once that's done, I'll start the test and I'll time that just to again compare that to the estimated, which for me is about two minutes per SPU and I'm on a mechanical disc so it's going to take about five minutes according to this. Okay, so time check and wait a few minutes for that to finish.
Okay, that's finished. Um, it does say one test is known to fail, and we have that one test that's failed there. The rest are okay, so that's fine to carry on and install the package. Uh, it was actually the time was a little bit quicker than estimated, so that's good. Uh, make install, remove some useless static libraries. And then uh, it looks like install some info files. And some additional documentation to install as well. That is it, so we can tidy up and move on to the next package, which is sysklogd. And we've got a couple of sets here to fix some problems. package. There's no test suite, so we just install it. Tidy up. And move on to sysv init. Okay, that's got patch, yes it has. So we put that patch in, build the package and install the package and that's that one done. 